Well, I would say that I fancy a fanless mini PC, but I'm not a sycophant. This is the ASRock Beatbox. This is a fanless mini PC. Would you believe that this thing has dual channel DDR3, uh, M SATA, mini PCIe, but that's occupied by the Bluetooth Wi-Fi adapter, and a two and a half inch SATA 6 hard drive bay in this tiny little sort of half cube thing? Yeah, it's, just, it's pretty powerful. This is the uh, Cherry Trail N3000. Officially, that's a Celeron processor, but it's a dual core situation. Uh, it comes in at 1.04 gigahertz, but it turbo boosts to 2.04. So that's nice. So inside the box, you've got the B-Box itself. Now the B-Box is available in three different colors, black, white, or gold. Uh, we got the gold version because reasons. It comes with a 75 slash 100 millimeter Visa mount and all the screws that go with that. So it's got the screws for mounting that two and a half inch hard drive that I mentioned. The Visa screws to actually mount the Visa mount to a Visa something or other. And then all the screws necessary to actually fasten the B-Box to the Visa connector or whatever you're mounting it to. So that's pretty cool. There's also a driver CD from ASRock, which the driver CD is larger than the device. So I'm not really sure what they're thinking. And so, yeah, I guess you could use a USB CD-ROM, but you know, I've got a USB CD-ROM right where I keep my USB floppy drive in the box of obsolete, that's where. So ASRock could save a few dollars and just bundle a card that has a link to the website that says, hey, go here to download the drivers. And everybody would just go download the drivers because why bother with a CD-ROM? So save a few dollars on installation, ASRock. We don't need the CD-ROM, silly. Also in the box is this special two and a half inch SATA cable. Now this SATA cable will go from the SATA 6 header on the motherboard and this little special funky power connector out to a normal two and a half inch SATA drive connector. This is really important, do not lose this. It's in the box and you're gonna lose it. Don't lose it. You already lost it, didn't you? <sighs> Man, you, just, you got one of these and you took it out and it's like, oh, the cable's gone. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually store it inside the box. It's fine, I'm sure that ASRock did not put it in the box because they didn't want a cable rattling around, especially during shipping, but go ahead and install it, it doesn't matter. Even if you're not gonna use a two and a half inch drive, just go ahead and put the cable in there because if you lose the cable, it'll be terribly inconvenient in the future. So go ahead and even if you don't plan to use a two and a half inch drive now, just go ahead, take it apart, Put the two and a half inch cable on the inside. You can go ahead and hook up the headers. It's completely fine. It's not gonna hurt anything to have that rattling around. There's no fan, so it's not like it's gonna get caught in the fan. So let's take a look at the back. At the back, it's got a Realtek gigabit ethernet adapter, two HDMI ports, one display port, two USB 3 uh, connections, and the power socket for the 35 watt power brick. At the front is a standard USB 3 port, and then you've got the USB 3 type C connector. That's the reversible USB connector, so you don't have the problem of the USB superposition, where no matter which way you plug it in to begin with, it's wrong. Uh, you don't have that with USB-C because it's reversible. So the other USB 3 port on the front is USB-C. USB 3C also supports a high wattage adapters so you can do quick charging with your phone um, through the USB 3C adapter. Even if you've got a legacy phone you can get a cable that's USB 3C on one end and then the micro USB on the other and use that to rapidly charge your phone. It's pretty convenient. Depending on how you use the machine and where you've got it set up that could be a really big feature for you. At the front there's also a headphone jack just a normal old three and a half millimeter headphone jack which is a nice touch. So let's pop the cherry trail and see what's under the hood here. So four Phillips screws secure it to the bottom. Uh, I'm just gonna unscrew this real quick. Taking it out, we can see that the, this is the mount for the two and a half inch drive. This is actually mounted to the bottom. It's got nice rubber grommets so that if you put a mechanical hard drive in here, that is gonna be the only moving part in the system that's gonna dampen the sound by having the little rubber standoffs for the drive. If you're gonna put an SSD in here, then no big deal. On hand, we happen to have this Samsung SSHD, which is a mechanical hybrid drive. It's a mechanical drive backed with a little bit of flash. Uh, you get a little bit of the performance of a flash drive, but the massive 500 gigabytes of storage in a mechanical drive for low, 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 low prices. Uh, for mechanical hard drives in the two and a half inch form factor, they do make those up to four terabytes now. So you could get a four terabyte two and a half inch drive and put in here if you wanted to. It's going to be a mechanical drive, of course, unless you're watching this video in the future and they have four terabyte SSDs, in which case, please send one to the past to me because I could really use one. Under the hood, we've also got two DIMM slots instead of one. This has been a problem for these small form factor machines. Everybody seems to want to put one DIMM slot. You don't get dual channel, you don't get the maximum performance of the platform. You know, with the previous generation Intel NUC, you know, those were i3, i5, i7 components, and you were paying i3, i5, and i7 prices for those. Even though the hardware platform was such that you couldn't really take full advantage of especially the performance of an, like an i5 and an i7, 
I mean, I had I had a fan and I could do cooling and the platform was just kind of limited. I mean, it was cool for what it was, but single channel was one of the big limitations of that platform. Well, ASRock has done away with this. This platform is dual channel. That means you can run 16 gigabytes of RAM in this thing. 16 gigabytes of RAM just in the palm of my hand is mind blowing for me because my first laptop had two megs of RAM. So the mind reels. Now, the other thing here is the M SATA drive. This particular M SATA drive is only 128 gig. That's going to be plenty for our purposes, but you could put an M SATA drive in here of whatever capacity. And then under the M SATA drive is actually the, uh, 802.11 AC slash Bluetooth mini PCIe card. Now, while we've got this taken apart, we're going to go ahead and install this Samsung SSHD that I mentioned before. And that's also to test compatibility. So sometimes with these small form factor machines, they can't really deliver the power for power hungry two and a half inch peripherals. This particular Samsung drive consumes quite a lot of power because it's an SSD plus a mechanical hard drive. And it also generates a fair bit of heat. So we're gonna put it in here and see how it performs, see how it runs. If it runs, we're gonna install Linux on this and do some other stuff so that we don't trash the uh, the Windows install that's on the M SATA drive. But at this point, we're just gonna mount it in and see if the UEFI sees it. Now, if you didn't hear me mention it before, I'm gonna say again, the other big thing with this platform is that it is completely fanless. That means it is silent. It is a noiseless PC. No buzzing, no high-pitched whine, no grinding noise, no, <laughs> you know, no sound of rocks in a blender. There is no fan. It just quietly gets warm. Now, fanless has been tried before. Fanless has been tried before with silicon that says, oh, we support, you know, 95 degrees C silicon temperature. That has not worked out in terms of things being stable. So I was kind of skeptical when I got this. It's like, yeah, you can run fanless, but it's also going to run at 95 degrees C the whole time. It's going to be unstable and it's going to lock up and it's going to be weird. So I kind of wanted to do some torture testing, but more on that in a minute. So I'm happy to report that I was able to install Ubuntu 15.04 and the Realtek ALC 283 audio, the gigabit uh, network, Bluetooth and wireless AC just worked. Um, I didn't test the infrared remote, but I would be surprised if it doesn't work. Although you may have to set up an LRC uh, command file. So that may not work perfectly out of the box. But if this platform becomes popular, I don't think you're going to have any trouble finding a multimedia distribution like Kodi or Mythbuntu to be able to run on this. There are other cool open source platforms that you could run on this too. OpenELEC, maybe Plex Media Server, Plex Media Client. Well, I mean, you can even run the Plex Media Client under Windows. The handy thing about this platform is that it's flexible. Unlike a Raspberry Pi where you're going to run Linux or you're going to run one of these specialty distributions of Linux that, that does that, this will actually let you run anything that runs on x86. So if you are more comfortable having a home theater PC that runs Windows, you can totally have a home theater PC that runs Windows. Of course, if you want to run Linux, you can run Linux too. So after messing around with this platform, this platform is great. I was sure that heat was going to kill it. So I tried to kill it. Uh, not only would it not die, it actually stayed in turbo mode the whole time. So, you know, out of the box, this thing is one gigahertz or the advertised speed is one gigahertz, but it can turbo boost up to two gigahertz. I was delightfully surprised that this thing stayed in turbo the entire time. Like I basically had the whole thing wrapped up. I was doing lots of terrible things to it. I was messing with VLC. I had Internet Explorer going in the background on just terrible pages because Internet Explorer's JavaScript engine is awful and will use all of the CPU all of the time. The CPU was pegged. The device did qu get quite warm. I mean, it was not alarmingly hot, but it was hot and it didn't do anything weird. It didn't crash. Nothing strange happened. I also had the mechanical hard drive in there, which generates a fair bit of heat. So that was even contributing more heat to the system than it normally has. And it was stable. It was fine. It was warm to the touch. The heat sink is joined mechanically to the top of the case. And so it sort of radiates heat from the, the very top of the device. Whatever the design, it seems to work well. I was really impressed by it, actually. The fact that it stayed in turbo the whole time, it didn't overheat, it didn't glitch, it didn't do anything weird. That's really impressive. If that holds up for five years, this is going to be a great, I mean, you just sort of buy it, sit it in the living room and forget about it. If you want a quiet PC in the living room or you want a quiet PC in the bedroom, you know, maybe you're like me and you're on call 24 hours a day and sometimes you got to go roll out of bed and see what went down and try to fix it. This is a pretty good machine for that because it is completely silent. It can be ready in an instant. I did have some trouble with the remote, the included remote waking the machine from sleep, but that's one of the tested configurations and that should actually work perfectly by the time that these are actually released and in supply. 
it was down to a driver issue. We also had some driver issues around the Intel side of things. The Intel video drivers were a little wonky with DisplayPort at 4K, but I'm happy to report that 4K 30 hertz on both of the HDMI ports worked fine. Any conversation about home theater PCs and like media center stuff, you really wanna talk about HDMI CEC. Well, if you haven't heard of HDMI CEC, it's a standard that has been around for uh, many years. Every TV of the last three or four years, at least, uh, supports HDMI CEC. What this standard is, is that the fancy remote that comes with your television that has, you know, an arrow pad and a menu button and all this stuff, those commands that you hit on the remote will actually pass through the HDMI cable to whatever device you've got hooked up. So if you've got a Blu-ray player or, you know, an audio center or something that's connected through HDMI, your television remote can actually send commands to those devices. This is one of the great things about the Raspberry Pi. This is one of the reasons it's been really popular as a media center because it's supported HDMI CEC from day one. I mean, the original, the very original, the Model T of Raspberry Pis uh, supported HDMI CEC and it worked brilliantly. And that was kind of a new feature on televisions at the time. There's a lot of other devices out there that support HDMI CEC. Intel and their infinite arrogance, of course, still does not support HDMI CEC. So what that means is that you have to use the, the included remote with the ASRock B-Box in order to remotely control it. It means your television remote is not going to work. I don't think this is fixable in software. In the first generation NUC, it was not fixable in software. There's actually a company called Pulse8, uh, and Pulse8 uh, makes an adapter for the old Intel NUX that will give you HDMI CEC. Uh, there's a version of that that they make that is an HDMI pass-through cable that has USB on it. That will be perfect for the ASRock B-Box. You just get that and you've got an HDMI pass-through cable that you plug into a USB port and that powers whatever electronics are inside the cable. And that cable will parse and decode the HDMI CEC commands and then pass it through on the NUC so that it works. Uh, it's a $30 cable which kind of kind of stings a little bit, but it'll give you HDMI CEC functionality on Windows or Linux or whatever your platform is so that you don't actually have to use more than one remote. Of course, you can also just use the remote that came with the B-Box. That's completely an option. I just thought it was worth pointing out because it is really silly that Intel in this day and age, it's like, oh, we're going to make consumer electronics and stuff for people's living rooms and that kind of thing. All right, that sounds good. Why don't you support the standards? We also did some testing with 4K video, uh, 4K video at 30 hertz uh, only. It actually worked really well. You may recall from our testing the you know the Dell XPS 13, we had some trouble with 4K video playback even on the Dell XPS 13. The guys at ASRock tell us it's because of the dual channel memory. The dual channel memory has the bandwidth necessary to actually do 4K video. And it makes sense if you think about it. It's not really the memory bandwidth for the system, it's the memory bandwidth for the graphics it Adapter. because the graphics adapter remember shares memory with the system memory the memory of the graphics adapter is the system memory and so if system memory is faster the graphics memory is going to be faster and so in this case with Intel HD graphics of course it's going to use system memory and in this case we've got dual channel it's only four gigs in the configuration that we have here but we can run up to 16 gigabytes so in this configuration with the dual channel memory is fast enough to do 4k at 30 Hertz it's actually pretty smooth. Actually playing back video at 4K at 30 hertz and goofing off on the internet on a second monitor on this tiny little thing worked fine. So in terms of like digital signage, if you need to run a digital signage controller and control three displays, like three 1080p displays, that would be perfect with this platform. There's a program for the Raspberry Pi called Screenly. And Screenly is a pretty cool program that gives you a sort of a web backend that you can upload videos and JPEGs and still images to. I would like to see a version of that for this platform because this platform has a lot more horsepower than a Raspberry Pi. Screenly kind of struggles a little bit on a Raspberry Pi. This will work really well for that and be able to drive multiple displays. And so somebody go fork that repo and get that done. And let me know in the forum or come on over to the comments. The PC in the living room or the PC in other parts of the house, the PC in your bedroom, is always a challenge because you don't want anything that's really loud taking up space there. You know, Apple products have been popular there because they're relatively silent. They go to sleep a lot. They're almost narcoleptic. This platform being completely fanless is a good choice for those uses. The other thing too here is that even though this is a Celeron, this is a, you know, a dual core N3000, I really, it doesn't feel like a Celeron. And I think ASRock and some of their branding has shied away from the Celeron name. It's not really, uh, you know, it's the N3000, it's not a Celeron. And I don't blame them because this does not feel like a Celeron. This feels like a much better PC. If I had a choice of one of the older generation, uh, Intel, you know, i5, i7, NUX versus this, I would probably choose this. This is the more practical option. 
yeah, those Nux probably have a little bit more horsepower, but in terms of practical day-to-day -day things that I would be doing, I think this is better. I think this is better because it's fanless. I think this is better because it's a more modern platform. I especially think this is better because you've got the dual channel memory. And I think that that's sort of a big performance thing. I also like that Linux on this thing was, was basically completely painless. So if you're going to run Flex Media Center, you can even use USB HDMI capture devices. We've got this Hopog USB capture. It works great. Uh, you, there's a version of this capture that does component capture. That one even works on Linux. So you could use this as a, as a full media center PC doing capture from cable or capture from the internet or whatever you want to do. With Plex Media Server, you can archive all of your footage. This is a really great choice for the home theater. The Bluetooth 4.0 interface means you can also use a Bluetooth 4.0 uh, PS3 adapter, for example, or PS3 controller, and put all of your emulation stuff on here. So if you want to play, you know, old video games through emulation, this would make a pretty good platform. If you're going to hollow out an old Xbox and turn an old Xbox into a PC, this is a pretty good building block in order to do that. Play all your old Xbox games. I didn't tell you to do that. So that's been the ASRock B-Box. Overall, I'm really impressed with this. This is a really solid piece of hardware. I think because it's a Celeron or because it's an N3000, I think it's gonna come in way under the radar at the price point. I don't think you're gonna be paying i3, i5, i7 prices for this thing. I think it's really gonna work out well. I think that Intel really got the pricing wrong for the OEM, what they were charging OEMs for the processors in the small form factor machines, because the small form factor machines are automatically going to be a little bit, you know, underpowered compared to their desktop counterparts. And the pricing on the, the NUX definitely was not that. But this, this is, is zippy. It's got some pep, but it's not carrying, you know, the i3, i5, i7 processor. It's, it's carrying the, the N3000 Celeron. And so I think because of that, the price point is going to be significantly lower. And I think that for the applications for which this is intended, it's going to work great. This would be an awesome computer for like your breakfast nook or, a, you know, a bedroom computer that you just need to check email on or roll out of bed to see, you know, what happened or, or triage the situation for your media collection, for those kinds of tasks. It's really awesome. Digital signage, business applications, that kind of thing. You know, thin, lightweight workstation. This is really good. I really like it. I'm going to play with it more over the next few weeks. We're going to do some stuff with Linux on it. We'll see how that goes. If you picked up one of these or you have any other questions, head on over to the forums at techsyndicate.com and maybe we can get together and sort of answer questions. If you picked one of these up, I want to know what you think. I want to know what your impressions are. So head on over to the forum at techsyndicate.com and I'll see you there. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out. <music>